A teen is dead and police are looking for his killer after shooting in the West, Toronto's West End. A high-profile advocate of, of wounded veterans settles his lawsuit with the government and the Hawks men's volleyball team remains undefeated. Humber News starts now. Hello, it's Thursday, November 18th, 2010. Welcome to Humber News, coming to you from the Broadcast Centre at North Campus. I'm Amy Douglas, thanks for joining us. And I'm Tom Parisi. Ahead on our show, we'll have all your, new, your news, sports and entertainment highlights, as well as your five-day weather forecast. But first, Amy has our top story. Detectives are hunting a killer after a teen was shot to death. Police responded to a report of gunshots heard around 4 p.m. yesterday in North York. They found the 16-year-old inside a ground floor doorway of a low-rise apartment near Bathurst Street and Wilson Avenue. Detectives say they will be reviewing surveillance tapes and video cameras from around the neighborhood. Police currently have no description of the suspect or suspects. The Barry mother convicted of murdering her two young daughters begins her 25-year sentence in jail today. Going to be water in the lungs because you push those children underneath the water. Isn't that what happened? The footage shown here is from Elaine Campione's 2006 interrogation in Barrie. She was found guilty of drowning her two infant daughters in a bathtub. The murders took place during a bitter custody battle between Campione and her ex-husband. The defense claimed she was mentally ill, but the Crown argued Campione killed the 19-month-old and 3-year-old, so her estranged husband could not get custody. Yesterday, Campione was sentenced to life in prison without the eligibility of parole. The Ontario Review Board says offenders not deemed criminally responsible for their actions are on the rise. The number has increased from 375 in 1992 to 1,500 patients in 2009. Experts say these inmates are flooding prisons and psychiatric facilities and may not be able to accommodate them. Just over 18% of the almost 9,000 inmates in Ontario are mentally ill. A Toronto nurse working at the St. Joseph's Health Centre has been charged with sexually assaulting a female patient. Police say 26-year-old Ray Jimenez molested the victim while pretending to carry out a medical examination. Jimenez has been employed as a registered nurse at the hospital since 2008. Anyone with more information is asked to call police. The strictness of airport, American airport security is coming under fire as the video of one passenger's run-in with security continues to make headlines around the world. As the holiday travel season approaches, reporter Jared Lalonde went to find out whether students feel secure about airport scanning procedures. John Tyner's frustration with airport security is being heard loud and clear. But if you touch my junk, I'm going to have you arrested. <laughs> the video of Tyner's confrontation has gone viral. Critics have begun using the video as a way to combat the invasiveness of this new scanning technology. The advanced imaging technology scans a person's body and gives a complete 3D image of the person to check for weapons and other dangerous objects. But while these things may be good for safety at airports, the question remains as to whether these scanners are a breach of privacy. We went out to ask Humber students how they feel about bearing all for airport security. Um, I'm not too comfortable with that personally. Um, I don't think I would enjoy somebody watching me from behind a camera. Yeah, I probably feel the same way. I wouldn't want anyone looking through my body. It's a little uncomfortable. I think it's a really big invasion of uh, one's privacy. And um, they do have laws, you know, to protect our privacy. So, I, like, where do the boundaries end and begin is what I want to know. As travelers gear up for the invasiveness of airport security, it's safe to say that Tyner's outburst may not be the only one heard at airports in the near future. Jared Lalonde, Humber News. Sixteen pedestrians have been struck in Toronto in the past 48 hours. Toronto police say they often see an increase in these accidents this time of year. Factors include fewer daylight hours and hooded clothing worn as weather, as weather gets colder. A sergeant, a sergeant in the traffic division says the recent rain and wind in Toronto has also been a contributing factor. He says when people rush to get out of, get out of bad weather, they often ignore basic safety procedures. Today marks the end of Dufferin Jog. Mayor David Miller will be on hand this afternoon to officially open the new 70-meter underpass at Dufferin and Queen. Until today, traffic along Dufferin was forced to take a one-block detour to get to Queen Street. The intersection headache has been around since the 1880s. The project began last summer. Exam time is approaching with deadlines looming. Students may resort to diet, a diet of chips and coffee to deal with the stress. Reporter Romy Levine looks at what can be done to maintain a healthy diet during crunch time. Sleepless nights studying is characteristic of this time of year. 
While hitting the books, hungry students tend to pick food that's more greasy than nutritious, and it's not making them feel great. Just I feel very drained as to what I usually feel. Upbeat, uh, loud, now I just want to go to bed. <laughs> Regardless, many students are unapologetic of their bad eating habits. <laughs> I don't even bother because it's just that one week, so... If you can't help your exam crunch time cravings, Food and Nutrition Coordinator Susan Somerville says there are healthy alternatives to the traditional midnight snack. Try and have something that's a little healthier like popcorn, the lower salt, lower fat versions because it's high in fiber and lower in calories. Um, the ideal thing to have would be some fruits and veggies. Somerville suggests eating food that increases energy levels, but this is her number one recommendation. Uh, whatever you do, don't skip your meals and make sure your meals have some good sources of carbohydrates, uh, hopefully ones that have good uh, sources of fiber in them. When hunger hits, eat a little bit less of this and have some more of this or this. Romy Levine, Humber News. When we come back, we'll have your national and international news. Christina Russo will have your sports highlights and we'll have your weather forecast with Mesa Alajami. It's calling for rain today, so don't leave home without one of these. I'll have all your details after the break. <laughs> 